Hi guys, this is, uh, we are already in week 15. Yeah, it says 15 up there on the wall. So week 15 is the week when we start talking about carbohydrates. Uh, we just finished chapter 16. Chapter 16 in your book was about proteins, amino acids, and enzymes. And the next two videos are on carbohydrates, which is chapter 13. So this is uh, week 15, and this is video number one, video lecture number one. Carbohydrates are defined as a large class of naturally occurring polyhydroxy aldehydes and ketones. So those last four words are pretty busy. Polyhydroxy means lots of OHs, right? Lots of hydroxyl groups. Aldehydes are C double bond OH and they're on the end. And ketones are C double bond O surrounded by two neighboring carbons. All right. Monosaccharides. Well, mono we know is one, and saccharide is our clue that this is a carbohydrate. So monosaccharides are the simplest of our carbohydrates. We'll learn, I think, four of them. Uh, there are many of them, however. They contain one molecule, because it's a monosaccharide, right? It's one molecule ranging from three to seven carbons. Now, Disaccharides that we're going to learn about are also one molecule, but they're made up of two monomers or two monosaccharides linked together. More on disaccharides a little bit later on, probably video number two. This video today is all about glucose for the most part. Uh, glucose is the most common monosaccharide. It's a monomer or a single building unit for starch, cellulose, and also glycogen, for example. It's a major source of energy. The, the, the difference between glycogen in animals and starch in plants is that, well, very simply, glycogen just has more, uh, more branches. We'll just leave it at that. Now, I've drawn a what's known as a Fisher projection or a Fisher diagram of glucose. It's a monomer for starch and cellulose, like I said. Notice I've drawn carbon-1 at the top. It's an aldehyde. And the way the carbons go are right, left, right, I'm sorry, the OHs are right, left, right, right, as you do carbon 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then CH2OH on the end. This is an aldose, a sugar that contains an aldehyde group. On the right-hand side, I'm drawing fructose, which is found in corn syrup and fruit. This is also a monosaccharide. However, if you look at carbon 2, that's a ketone right there, right? So this is not an aldose like glucose. This is a ketose, which is a sugar that contains a ketone group. So that's glucose and fructose. Those were the straight chain drawings. You notice I put carbon one at the top, carbon six on the bottom. Okay, those are called Fisher diagrams or Fisher projections. F-I-S-C-H-E-R. Okay, the reason why I bring that up is because when we have closed rings, they're called something else. Monosaccharides can react with each other to form disaccharides. So we are going to approach disaccharides in this video. All right, disaccharides um, are a carbohydrate composed of two monosaccharide molecules. All right, so that's the simple one. Number two is a little bit more complex. Monosaccharides, um, we, we don't just have to make one link to make a disaccharide, but with polysaccharides, we have to make many of these links and we'll talk about the links in the next video those are called glycosidic linkages so polysaccharides are complex carbohydrates and the definition of polysaccharides is a carbohydrate that's a polymer of many monosaccharide molecules so a disaccharide has two monosaccharides linked together polysaccharides have many monosaccharides linked together all right, so, so far we've talked about glucose and fructose as our two monosaccharides that we discussed and we drew the Fisher projection, the structures. I want to take a closer look at glucose, okay? So glucose, which is also called blood, blood sugar or dextrose, uh, they use those in IVs, right? Um, it's already as simple as it's going to be, so it can go right into your bloodstream. It doesn't have to be broken down by enzymes in the stomach. Glucose has two forms. The first one I'm drawing is the same one I drew 
on the previous page. You got your right, left, right, right for carbons two through five. The OHs go right, left, right, right. This is D-glucose. You notice you got the aldehyde at the top, CH2OH on the bottom. L-glucose has the aldehyde on the top, CH2OH on, CH -OH on the bottom at carbon six, but now it's right, left, right, left. So D-glucose is the one that we will focus on mainly in this class. It's the most common. D-glucose is when your uh, carbon-5 OH group goes to the right. L-glucose is when the carbon-5 OH group goes to the left. All right? D-glucose. Because it's the most common, let's focus in on D-glucose. I'm drawing it again. So I got my six carbons down. Aldehyde at the top at C1. CH2OH at the bottom, C6, right, left, right, right, with my OHs on carbon 2, 3, 4, and 5. All right, so make sure you know how to draw that one, as well as L-glucose. This is the Fisher projection or Fisher diagram. Now, imagine looking at this. Watch me in the video real quick. Grabbing carbon 1, pulling it down towards you. Grab carbon 1, pull it down towards you so it's flat and then coil the six to the back. So I'm gonna to try, to, try to draw that. I've pulled carbon, carbon one down at me so it's flat, and now I'm wrapping carbon six around the back. So I've just turned, uh, turned the structure of glucose on its side, and then I coiled that CH2OH around to make a little, like a little bit of a curve here. So the reason why you see the dark lines is because that's telling you that that's, that's coming out of, the, out of the page of the paper and towards me. So the bond between carbon four and three is coming towards me. The bond between carbon three and two is out towards me. And then the bond between carbon two and one is going back towards the page. So that's why you see this and it's very important to draw it like that. So the second step after doing this is I want to take my carbon five and just rotate or swivel it swivel it so that carbon six is now sticking up in the air. Okay, now the last step is we can close the ring in two ways. I'm gonna take the OH on carbon five and I'm gonna use the oxygen to close the ring by attacking the carbon one. Those little dot, dot, dots is the, there's a lone pair on oxygen that will attack C1 and then push the C double bond O up to a single bond so the C single bond O on carbon one eventually gets an OH of its own, which I've circled down there in beta D-glucose. Now, why is it beta? Beta happens when the OH on C1 is up. That means that the OH in the previous step on carbon five attacked the C double bond O from the bottom, okay? Now, the other way, to close the ring is when the OH on carbon one is now going down. And I'm drawing this structure right now as we speak. All the other carbons, carbon six, carbon five, carbon four, carbon three, carbon two, unaffected, look exactly the same. So you know how to draw those. The only difference is that alpha D-glucose, the OH on carbon one is down. You notice that these are closed cycles, okay? These are not called Fisher diagrams or Fisher projections anymore. These are called Hayworth diagrams, all right? Hayworth diagrams are closed rings. So take another look at what we've done here. We've got a straight chain glucose, right, left, right, right, for carbons two through five. I then grab the aldehyde, visually speaking, pull it down towards me so it's like a line, and then I coil CH2OH on carbon six to the back. That gives me this fir first flat looking but unclosed representation. I rotate around C5 so that my carbon six points up. That makes the carbon five OH accessible and close enough to the carbonyl carbon on carbon one that we can close the ring using oxygen's lone pair. If I close the ring attacking that C double bond O from the bottom, it's going to pop the OH up and give me beta D-glucose. 
if by chance the OH attacks the C double bond O from the top, it's going to make the OH go down in alpha D glucose. So this ring closure is always a very important subject for me. Make sure you guys are aware of it. This is the last page of video one. Make sure you know this page. All right.